Let's be honest, closing entries have a reputation for being a bit dry, maybe even the dullest part of accounting. But here's the thing, once you understand their purpose, you'll actually appreciate their value. Closing entries are straightforward and play a vital role in preparing your account for the next period, giving you a clean slate to start fresh. Think of them as the final step that resets everything, leaving you with a clean beginning from the last period's clutter. So let's dive in and see how these quick steps can make you feel ready for a brand new financial chapter. Closing entries are done during the eighth and final step in the accounting cycle. If you've been following along, you'll remember my previous video where we went over all eight steps from identifying transactions to preparing financial statements and the final step, closing the books. Closing entries is the last crucial step that wraps up everything we've done. So what are closing entries? Why do they matter and how do we do them? Let's find out. Think of closing entries as a reset button for certain accounts in your business. At the end of each accounting year, we record closing entries to transfer the balances from temporary accounts, revenue, expenses, and dividends into a permanent account, retain earnings. By doing this, we reset these temporary accounts to zero, so they're ready to capture new transactions in the next period. Closing entries are the final wrap up of a company's financial activities over the course of a year. By transferring these balances, businesses can separate each year's financial activity and keep an ongoing tally of accumulated profits and retained earnings. This helps provide a clean slate each year for accurate, organized financial reporting. Identifying which accounts are temporary and which are permanent is simpler than it might seem. Every account in a business trial balance falls into one of six types, assets, liabilities, equity, revenue, dividends, and expenses. That is all there is, six account types. You might recognize these from the accounting equation, assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. The expanded equation includes all six categories. Assets equals liabilities plus equity plus revenue minus dividends minus expenses. Or you may be familiar with dealer, the trick to remember the rules of debits and credits. DEA equals LER. Now that you know the six account types, which ones are the temporary accounts that get zeroed out and the balance transferred to retain earnings, a permanent account, at the end of the accounting year. Again, easy to remember. That would be all income statement accounts and the dividend account. Revenue, expenses, and dividends. Red, for short. These red accounts are the temporary accounts that are reset to zero at the end of each accounting year, and we get them ready to track new activities in the next year. The other three accounts, assets, liabilities, and equity, are permanent accounts, and their balances are always carried forward from one accounting period to the next. Let's look at how this plays out in a real world business scenario. Imagine it's January 1st and our company Scoops and Smiles is starting a new accounting period. The trial balance report reflects all accounts, both permanent and temporary. Since it's the first day of the period, all temporary accounts, revenue, expense, and dividends show zero balances. This reset is because as part of the previous year's closing process, all temporary account balances were transferred to retain earnings during the eighth step of the accounting cycle, closed the books in the prior period. As the new accounting period progresses, Scoops and Smiles will record all incoming revenue and expenses in the appropriate temporary accounts. Let's say the company which sells specialty ice cream logs the following transactions during the year. Total sales amounted to 150,000. The cost of goods sold, ingredients like cream, sugar, and mix-ins, plus the production cost total, 60,000. Operating expenses, which includes rent, utility, wages, and other business expenses, amounted to 30,000. The company decided to pay out $10,000 in dividends to its shareholders. By December 31st, each of these temporary accounts will hold the year's total amount as described. At the end of the accounting period, we will do the closing entries. 
Now that the year is ending, it's time to complete the eighth step in the accounting cycle, closing the books. To close the books for the year, the company needs to reset these temporary accounts to prepare for the next period. Here's how each closing entry works. We close revenue to retain earnings. The revenue account must be zeroed out at year end to clear for the next period. So here is the entry. We debit revenue for 150,000 and we credit retain earnings for 150,000. This reduces the revenue account to zero and increases the retained earnings by the year's total revenue. Next, we close expense accounts, such as cost of goods sold and operating expenses. The entries would be, we debit retained earnings for 90,000, which is the total expenses. We credit cost of goods sold for 60,000 and we credit operating expenses for 30,000. This resets the expense accounts to zero while reducing the retained earnings by the total expenses for the year. We now have net income reflected in our retained earnings account. After closing revenue and expenses, the effect of net income, revenue minus expenses, is now included in the retained earnings. Finally, we close out the dividend paid during the year, reflecting the effect on retained earnings. And the entry is, we debit retained earnings for $10,000 and we credit the dividend account for $10,000. This reduces retained earnings by the dividend amount paid, finalizing the profit allocation. After these closing entries, the temporary accounts, revenue expenses, and dividends are reset to zero, while retained earnings now reflects the accumulated profit of the business over time adjusted for the dividends paid and ready to begin the new period. This process ensures that the company's financial records start fresh in the next period. And that's it for today's video. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up for more accounting insights and tips. Make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss an update. Any questions or suggestions, leave a comment below. Thank you for watching. See you next time.